Welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Eric Glassy. Today we are going to talk about character creation. This episode is called Classical Character Creation because some easier and faster methods of creating your characters are in development. Currently, creating your character can be a little overwhelming and I've seen new players take a whole session. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. Hopefully, this will be a character that you can play with for many years. As such, this series on character creation is going to be multi-part so we can be as thorough as possible. First, you'll want to think about the campaign that you're going to be in and who you want to be. In addition, it might be wise to talk to the GM to make sure that the party is well balanced. Running into a battle without any healers may not be the best idea. You start off with the basics, gender, morality, race, and handedness. Yes, I said handedness, as in what hand is your dominant hand? And yeah, it matters. So male or female? Male characters tend to be physically larger and stronger, while females have access to some special areas of magic that males do not. Otherwise, they are completely equal in all other aspects. A woman can be just as skilled as a man in the art of war if she chooses. Morals. These help players role play their characters without restricting them too much. There are six categories and I'm going to show you on the typical alignment chart where they typically fall. One, moral. They see the world as black and white while wanting to obey the laws of the land even if they don't agree with it. It's very hard for these characters to compromise their values. They will fall underneath lawful good. Number two, ethical. They, like moral individuals, see the world as black and white, but they have their own moral compass. They would be neutral good. Number three, egocentric. Think of this person as someone whose moral compass is like that of the compass owned by Captain Jack Sparrow. It points the person towards the thing they want most. The egocentric person will do good if it benefits them. This individual would be chaotic neutral. Number four, maniacal. This individual will naturally be evil. However, their tendencies can range from lawful to chaotic, basically whatever will help them accomplish their goals, or they could even have their own set of rules that they follow. A good example of this is Boba Fett. He has his own code, which he follows, but will do whatever it takes to accomplish the mission. Number five, amoral. These individuals have no regard for life or laws. People are a means to an end and they may not even care very much for their own life. The best example of this is Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight. These individuals are chaotic evil, pure and simple. Number six, depraved. These characters will make an amoral person reluctant to join them. They tend to have behavior that would even sicken the mob boss. These individuals should be reserved for NPCs that the group should feel inclined to destroy. The point of moral is to help you role play your character. The GM can give you extra experience if you stay within your morals. I usually like to give more experience for role playing moral and ethical characters because role playing egocentric characters is pretty natural for most people. Race. Currently there are six major races within MML. They all have their unique skills and stat modifiers. The races are dwarves, gnomes, hellfolk or halflings, men, gray elves, and wood elves. They all have their own unique culture and economics and as a result have bonuses in skills and stats. There are three levels to these bonuses. Slight at 3%, moderate at 5 and strong at 10 Typically, a player can only select three bonuses from the list provided, although the amount of bonuses allowed is determined by the GM. Allowing more skills might make more sense thematically. Some unique skills would be gem cutting for dwarfs, stealth for hellfolk, and horsemanship for men. Each group has a list of about 12 plus skills for the player to choose from. The last thing you need to complete is to determine your handedness. You roll your percentage dice with the following results. 1 to 85% is right handed, 86 to 99% is left handed, and a roll of 100 would make you ambidextrous. Now you might be wondering, what does it matter? Besides potentially smudging the ink when you write letters left-handed, you get the benefit that attackers have a 10% less likely chance of hitting you because most people are used to fighting right-handed individuals. 
Overall, this section is the easiest. You pick your race, gender, morality, and handedness. It's pretty easy and shouldn't take very long. To help you follow along, I'm going to create a male gray elf elemental blade master. At this point, I only have one role, and that is for my handedness. I rolled a 12, so like most people, I'm right handed. No ink smudge letters for me. Other than that, everything else is my choice. So be as creative as you want to be. Until next time, let's shut it down.